This is the second of two videos to accompany the Further Mathematics Conference session, Centre of Mass. In this second video, we will continue to look at practical ways to explore the idea of Centre of Mass, but this time we will move on to three dimensions. Consider this three-dimensional object, which is an empty tube that used to contain crisps. It is not reasonable to assume that this is a uniform object. It is hollow, and the top is made of plastic, whereas the base is made of metal, which would be heavier. It is therefore not reasonable to assume that the centre of mass of this object would be at its geometric centre. It might be close, and we could probably reasonably conclude that it would be along the central axis, but how high up the centre of mass would be would depend on the different relative composition of the materials involved. We could use practical methods to locate it, and there are two ways that jump out. One way is to balance the tube horizontally on the edge of a table and start to move it gradually until it starts to tip. This would give us the position of the centre of mass as it is located up the tube. We would probably want to repeat this experiment several times so we were quite confident that we'd found that perfect sweet spot where the object started to tip. Another approach is to find the point at which the tube will topple. In this case, I would place my tube upright on a flat horizontal surface and then gradually incline this surface until such a point where the tube topples. It's important in this case to ensure that the surface I use has a suitably high coefficient of friction that this tube will topple before it slides. In the video, a piece of rubber matting is attached to a clipboard. This is the sort of rubber matting that you might find for draining boards. On the point of toppling, all three forces, the weight, the reaction and the friction, would act through the edge of the tube that is in contact with the surface, in other words, the pivot about which it wants to topple. Again, some adjustment and care is needed and probably repeat experimentation if you are confident of finding the correct point and therefore the correct angle at which toppling occurs. Once we have measured this angle, if we know the radius of the tube, we can then do a simple bit of trigonometric calculation to find the height x, in other words the distance up the tube of the centre of mass. We should take time with students to make sure that they are convinced that the two angles shown here as theta are indeed equal. This can be done by looking at either similar triangles or finding other angles in the diagram to convince us of this case. Once we have this fact and we've measured angle theta, it's then simple right angle trigonometry to find x. In the first video, we looked at how we could adjust the centre of mass of an object by fixing it with another object of different mass. We can do the same in three dimensions. For example, if I take my tube and through the centre of it pass a skewer with a lump of blue tack on, I can create some interesting experiments. Here is one example. Start by affixing an unknown mass of blue tack to the skewer and measure the distance of the blue tack from the base of the skewer, before then inserting it inside the tube. As before, we can then locate the new centre of mass of the tube, either by balancing it on the edge of the table, or by going for the toppling approach. The numbers shown here relate to the tubes and the equipment used at the conference session. The steps shown talk through the calculation so that we can work through this experiment to find the location of the centre of mass of the whole system, that is the tube and the blue tack, and indeed the skewer. We already know from previous calculations the centre of mass of the tube by itself, 
So if we put this information together, we should be able to therefore work out the location of the blue tack. Essentially, we are working backwards in our calculations from the method that we used in the first video. Once we think we have the answer, we can use the toppling approach to check it, or vice versa. Indeed, this whole experimental process could be varied in many different ways. For example, we could in fact give students the mass of the blue tack to begin with and challenge them to work out where it should be positioned along the skewer so that the cylinder with the blue tack inside topples at a given angle. A further possible extension is to place our cylinder with the blue tack in, or perhaps just going back to the simple case of the empty cylinder, on different surfaces and find whether it was more likely to slide or topple when pushed at different heights. Here we can vary the surface by having a high friction coefficient, such as with the rubber matting used before, or maybe using something like paper where the coefficient of friction will be much smaller.